Now let's look at our standard primitive scene. It should look something like this, or close to it. Make sure you're in the front view. One thing I haven't showed you yet is that in these views you can go from wireframe to default shading, or from default shading to default shading with edged faces, like that, to help you see what you're doing. Let's take our scene and maximize it into full screen and go to the front view. And now I'm going to teach you a little bit about gizmos and transforms. If you select on this sphere here, you can see that these colorful circles are appearing. And if I grab them, it actually moves my sphere. Well, rotate, I should say, more correctly. That's because select and rotate is selected right here. If I go to move, lines show up, which represent the different axes in 3D. So here's the Y axis. We can move the sphere up and down. Here's the X axis. We can move the sphere left to right. And if we select this square here, we can move in both axes at the same time. Those are called gizmos. If I go to the top view, hold down my middle button and pan, now I can see that I can move in these axes in the top view. If I go to an orthographic view by clicking on the corner of the cube here, I can now see that I have all three axes I can move in. And rotating is the same. The yellow one, the red one, the green one. Let's look at the box rotation, just the same. Okay, so let's undo that by hitting Control Z, Control Z, get everything back to normal, or you can go up here to undo. And that's the basics of transforms. Let's take this sphere and practice by moving it onto the plane with the box, just like that. Let's now go to the top view Rotate it back this way. And here, let's try something else. If we hold down Shift, make sure Select and Move is selected. Now hold down Shift and drag along the Y axis. You'll see that we're making a copy now. And when we let go, it will give us the, op the option of copying the sphere, or making an instance of the sphere, or making a reference of the sphere. Now I'm going to talk about copying and instancing, because those are the most important. If we copy, that just makes another copy of the sphere. Let's see that as an example. So copy your sphere. Now if I go into the Modify tab and change that sphere's radius, it only changes that sphere. Now let's see the difference if we make an instance. Hold down Shift again drag the other direction this time and make sure it's on instance. Now if I go here to radius in the modify tab of this sphere, you will notice that it changes both spheres. This becomes important in scenes where you have a lot of the same object, which happens pretty frequently in 3D. So any modifications I make to this sphere or this sphere, it will happen to both of them and the copy remains on its own. You can break the link between instances by clicking here, Make Unique. If I do that, this one can now be modified independently of the other, just as if it was a copy. So, to develop our standard primitive scene a little more, let's put our sphere closer to the box, something that makes sense for like a still life. And now let's take another sphere and put it on top of the box and make it smaller. We can do that by staying in the top view, holding down shift, dragging on the yellow part of the gizmo to right there. We don't want it instanced. Copy. Let's go to the front view and we'll sit it right on top of that box. But the scale looks a little bit wrong, so let's go to Scaling, Select and Uniform Scale. So your transform is 
move, rotate, scale right here. With scaling, we have some different options. This triangle means it's scaling in all directions the same proportion. This one is doing it in two dimensions only. So if I look like this, it's doing that. We don't want that. And this one is scaling in one axis only, or one axis only. You can also do that up here if you hold and drop down. This is the uniform scale. This is non-uniform scale, scale in one axis. And this is the squash, the one that was doing the two axes at the same time. So what we actually want to do is an overall scale or a uniform scale by grabbing there. We can just hold down and drag and make our sphere a little bit smaller and then select and move down onto our box. There's also this handy transform tool up here called Select and Place, which won't really help us now, but it's good to know about. If you have Select and Place selected, then when you move this thing, it will actually jump to the face of other objects. So you can see that's only moving along the surface of that sphere, or this box, or this plane. And it's based on where the pivot point is for that sphere, which we'll talk more about later with pivot points. But for now, let's just use a standard move and get that right on top of that box just like that. 